Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday, the 25th of May. India resumes domestic passenger flights two months after coronavirus lockdown. Afghan President Ghani vows to release Taliban prisoners. And Muslims in India observe Eid al Fitr amidst lockdown. And now for all the details. India's airlines resume flights with about a third of operations, but on domestic routes only with fresh guidelines from the health ministry, even as positive cases of coronavirus reached over 138,000. Flight operations remain shut for two months owing to a nationwide lockdown necessitated by the coronavirus pandemic. After two months of no-flight operations across India owing to the nationwide lockdown necessitated by the coronavirus pandemic, domestic passenger flights resumed on Monday with a reduced number. As operations resumed amid rise in coronavirus cases, hundreds of people reached the Indira Gandhi International Airport in capital New Delhi to take early morning flights to their hometowns and workplaces. In a number of airports in the country, Passengers were asked to maintain social distancing in queues and otherwise, and wear masks as they underwent thermal screening and their luggage was sanitized. Flight attendants were seen in protective suits as other precautions were taken by the officials conducting checks at airports. There were a lot of people stranded in this past two months and they wanted to reach to certain places. Then I think overall in the nation, uh, this is being of a great help to such people who were stranded. So experience-wise, to just sum it up, if you ask me, this is, yes, it is overall different because we are not used to coming to work like this. Several airlines, including Indigo, SpiceJet Limited and Vistara, are preparing to restart some operations. However, budget carrier GoAir said it will resume flight operations from June 1st as it awaits clarity on the readiness of states and airports. Meanwhile, India witnessed the highest ever spike of 6,977 positive cases in the last 24 hours, taking the total number of COVID-19 to 138,845 as on Monday. India is now among the top 10 countries in the world regarding the total number of COVID-19 cases. Security forces on Monday gunned down two terrorists in an encounter in Kulgam district of India's Jammu and Kashmir. There have been several skirmishes between terrorists and security forces in Kashmir Valley this month. Two terrorists were neutralized by security forces in an encounter in Kulgam district of India's Jammu and Kashmir on Monday. A joint team of the Indian Army, police and paramilitary forces had launched cordon and search operations in Khud Hanjipura area in Kulgam, following which the gunfight ensued. The terrorists were gunned down in retaliatory fire. Police said incriminating materials including arms and ammunition was recovered from the encounter site. Search operations were still underway in the area till the last reports came in. This comes a week after two terrorists of Pakistan-based Hezbollah Mujahideen terror group were gunned down after a 15-hour long gun battle in Srinagar city of Jammu and Kashmir. Indian security forces have stepped up anti-terrorism operations in Kashmir Valley in recent days, claiming Pakistan has continued to infiltrate terrorists even at the time of coronavirus pandemic. In Pakistan's worst air disaster since 2012, state-run Pakistan International Airlines crashed into a Karachi neighborhood on Friday, killing 97 people. A preliminary report on the crash has raised serious questions over circumstances of the incident. Investigators are trying to find out if the crash of the flight is attributed to a pilot error or a technical glitch. 
More funerals were held while the Chief Minister of Pakistan's Punjab province on Sunday visited the residence of pilot Captain Sajid Gul, who lost his life in plane crash that killed 97 people in Karachi on Friday. State-run Pakistan International Airlines flight PK-8303 was flying from Lahore to Karachi with 99 people on board when it went down in mid-afternoon on Friday while trying a landing attempt. There were two survivors. Meanwhile, investigators are trying to find out if the crash of the flight is attributed to a pilot error or a technical glitch. According to Geo News report, New leads have raised fresh questions over the circumstances of the incident. In a report prepared by the country's Civil Aviation Authority, the Airbus A320's engines had scrapped the runway thrice on the pilot's first attempt to land. After the third attempt, the pilot took the aircraft off into the air again. The pilot made a decision on his own to undertake a go-around after he failed to land the first time. It was only during the go-around that the air traffic controller was informed that landing gear was not deploying, it said. Meanwhile, PIA Chief Executive Officer Arshad Malik has said that the black box of the plane has been handed over to the investigation team. A four-member panel has also been set up, which will submit its report on the disaster in three months. Pakistan only resumed domestic flights last week after it has suspended air travel due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Many of the victims in the air crash were believed to be travelling ahead of Muslim month of Eid al-Fitr. Moving on, locals in Pakistan administered Kashmir have blamed police atrocities against them have continued even during COVID-19 lockdown. A family was allegedly brutally beaten up by police in Muzaffarabad while going for medical checkup. Policemen in Muzaffarabad city of Pakistan administered Kashmir allegedly attacked an e-rickshaw owner and his female family members recently while they were going for a medical checkup amid COVID-19 lockdown. Authorities have imposed lockdown for the past two months in the illegally occupied region. However, people are allowed to come out for essential services and medical emergency. The incident has highlighted the plight of the people of the region who have long blamed they are denied even basic fundamental rights and are meted out with severe brutality by the Pakistani establishment. Pakistan administered Kashmir has registered 209 COVID-19 cases and two deaths so far. Locals have blamed the region lacks proper testing facilities and expert medical staff to fight the pandemic, but Pakistan continues to pay no heed. In news from Afghanistan, Afghan President Ashraf Ghani has welcomed the Taliban's surprise announcement of a three-day ceasefire during the Eid al-Fitr holidays. In response, Ghani has announced restarting of the process of releasing Taliban prisoners as a goodwill gesture. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani has welcomed the Taliban ceasefire announcement and extended the offer of peace in Afghanistan. Speaking at the presidential palace right after observing the Eid al-Fitr prayers, a day to mark the end of holy fasting month of Ramadan, Ghani on Sunday promised his government will accelerate the process of releasing the Taliban prisoners and asked the hardline Islamist group to do so. در عین حال سر طالب با صدا میکنیم که زندانیار قوای امنیتی و دفاعی ما را که نزد از اینها موجود هستن به زودی ممکنه رها سازن The Taliban declared a three-day Eid ceasefire in Afghanistan starting Sunday via a statement on Saturday. The move came as fighting between the Afghan security forces and the group had intensified despite the coronavirus pandemic.
On May 11, the Afghan government suspended the release of insurgent prisoners, a part of U.S. Taliban deal signed on February 29, saying the Taliban must bring its total number of release security force members to 200. The government has released 1,000 Taliban prisoners so far. The release of up to 5,000 Taliban prisoners was included as part of U.S. Taliban there deal. Are multiple groups of Taliban. India's northeast and Manipur province is leading the way by setting up dedicated quarantine centers for the transgender who are traveling back home amidst lockdown. Manipur as of Monday recorded 32 coronavirus cases. Government of India's northeastern Manipur province has allocated special quarantine centers for transgender separate from either men and women. The dedicated quarantine centers are for stranded members of the transgender community who are returning to the province amid a nationwide lockdown. The move is aimed to ensure them emotional security during the pandemic. The center is located at the government blind school Takiel Path in Imphal West District. A separate wing at the institutional quarantine centers at another school in Imphal East District has also been opened to accommodate those coming from red zones. For now, the total capacity of all the transgender quarantine centers in Manipur is 45, but it can further be increased if needed. Sanju and a few others like her will be quarantined at the facility for a period of 14 days. They're happy that the government has taken such initiative for her community. <laughs> The latest number of COVID-19 cases in India stands at 138,845. The fourth phase of the nationwide lockdown imposed as a precautionary measure to contain the spread of COVID-19 is scheduled to end on May 31st. Muslims across India on Monday marked a muted and gloomy Eid al-Fitr, one of the most important occasions in Islam. The usually Jewish celebration significantly toned down this year due to the coronavirus pandemic. Muslims across India marked the silent Eid al-Fitr on Monday by offering prayers at their homes and mosques while maintaining social distancing on the auspicious occasion which marks the end of the holy fasting month of Ramadan. Courtyards of the iconic Jama Masjid in Indian capital New Delhi stood empty, which are usually crowded with Eid worshippers. Authorities in New Delhi have relaxed many restrictions imposed to curb the spread of the coronavirus, but has kept communal gatherings suspended. लोगों से अपील की गई है कि लोग घर पे ही रहके नमाज पढ़ें, बाहर ना निकलें और ईद की खुशियां घर में ही मनाएं। इसके लिए हमने कल से ही अनाउंसमेंट भी की है। सोशल मीडिया के थ्रू भी लोगों को अपील की है और तमाम मस्जिदों के इमामों हजरत ने भी ये बात लोगों को बताई है। Traditionally, no Eid or Muslim gathering is complete without shaking hands and hugging each other thrice. But with social distancing being the norm to fight the coronavirus, the Eid celebrations in southern Hyderabad city were limited to distant greeting. Meanwhile, in Chennai city, as there were no public gatherings on the occasion, the spirit of charity remained the hallmark of the celebrations. Meanwhile, Indian Border Security Force also exchanged sweets with its Bangladeshi counterpart on the occasion at the border between the two countries. The forces have been following the tradition of meeting at the borders and exchanging sweets on key festivals for many years. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. India resumes domestic passenger flights two months after coronavirus lockdown. Afghan President Ghani was to release Taliban prisoners. And Muslims in India observe Eid al-Fidr amidst lockdown. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. 
You can also visit us on facebook.com slash asasia newsline and follow us on Twitter at asasia newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.